And now it's my very happy privilege and pleasure to present to you under this giant tent cathedral and to you in your home the man that God has raised up with the supernatural miracle working ministry, God's man of faith and power, Reverend A. A. Allen. Is this true? Yeah. Do you believe it? Yeah. Is it God's word? Yeah. In this book, did he promise to heal the sick? Yeah. That's enough. There's people here from all over the country anxious to testify and tell of the miracles of healing they have received during this campaign or under this ministry. Many of them say, Brother Allen, one little lady said, I had two huge tumors almost as large as a football on each side of my legs. They just rubbed together when I walked. That was in the last tent meeting here on the same spot two years ago. Said, what happened? Said, they just disappeared when you prayed. Miracles like that. Oh, yes. Do you believe God's doing this? An old issue of Miracle Magazine. 59 front and cover, a wraparound cover of the biggest gospel tent ever built, launched and dedicated in Atlanta, Georgia in 59. Under that tent, the first miracle was a front cover story, New Lungs for Lila. Miracle number two, under that great tent, we published this amazing story. I lived 21 years a girl. Now, I am a man. Picture before and after. Such marvelous, miraculous things, it's hard for some people to believe. A new toe for Oscar. That toe had been eaten off completely by cancer. But prayer, and God put a new one on. Oh, yes, he did. Under that same tent, this person was brought. No one knew where it was a woman or a man. Look this way one day and this way the next day. We carried the story, I was an hermaphrodite. The medical doctor came back with him, his own doctors declaring, this man has received a miracle. <laughs> Under that same tent, Oh, go on and shout. In Atlanta, Georgia, came a woman as big as a big Bertha in the circus. Prayer was offered. She testified, I lost over 200 pounds. We did not declare it was instantly. I felt that people wouldn't believe it if I declared that she lost over 200 pounds instantly. But after we published the story, God said, why didn't you tell the whole truth? She did lose 200 pounds, but she lost it instantly in answer to prayer. And it taught me a lesson. Why, well, I said, Lord, people will not believe it. He said, skeptics won't even believe she lost 200 pounds because you prayed, and you might as well tell them what I am doing. God is doing some marvelous things. The most amazing story of a young man born on the wrong side of the tracks, condemned to a lifetime in a penitentiary who pledged God 10 cents a day, the only dime he made in the Michigan State Penitentiary. He vowed, believing as he paid his pledge, and he made only 10 cents a day in prison, believing God's promise in Psalms 76, verses 10, 11, and 12. He said, God is going to change this decree and reverse the decision. One of our greatest preachers, God loosed him and set him free from that prison when he made that pledge, willing to pay a hundred dollar pledge even though he made only 10 cents a day. How many of you know this story? A most amazing story. When our tent up in Los Angeles stopped the traffic for blocks and blocks and blocks, 
A huge fire was seen over not this tent, but the one pictured here until the traffic was jammed on the boulevard. People come running in and screaming, the tent's on fire, the tent's on fire, the tent's on fire, and even the fire department came. But the amazing thing, it was not burning because it was a supernatural fire like the burning bush that the fire failed to consume. <laughs> Amen. And now, the old white tents down were under a brand new one. Let's give God a good clap offering for the new one. This is it. And it's a quarter of a mile around this new tent. This is the second time it has been up. And in the first campaign, it was too small. And over this weekend, you'll find it's too small here. So don't let anybody tell you that these kind of meetings are not popular that these kind of meetings are on their way out. We're just on our way in. God is doing such marvelous things. If you're not a regular subscriber to Miracle Magazine, this was flown in today here to this campaign. And it's a special revival edition of Miracle Magazine. And of these copies, there will be more than a million copies come off of the press. If you're not a regular subscriber, write today for your sample copy of Miracle Magazine and ask me to put your name on the subscription list. It's read now by near two million people every month and it's mailed free and postpaid for your letter and for your request. But you must have this special edition. It's called the Special Revival Edition. And it'll bring revival to your heart, your soul, your spirit, your pastor, or to your church. Amen. Did you read this issue? Lacey Foster's Miracle Hands, the amazing story of a woman who found her child burning up, burning alive on the bed. The bed was in flames and trying to extinguish the flames, save her child who was burning to death, who was an invalid. Her hands were cooked and burned to the bone. The flash dropped off of the bones. Doctors wired the joints together because they were falling off. They said, we'll have to amputate and cut your hands off. The lady said, God's called me to preach. God's called me to lay hands on the sick. And how can I lay hands on the sick if you cut them off? Here she is, and she's not paid to come here. She's one of our ministers. Stand up, Lacey Foster. Show her your miracle hands. Look at this. Not a scar. Not a scratch. God, get this in answer to prayer. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. just a minute, Sister Foster. We carried this last year, this year, as a front cover story in February. And I know there may be a lot of skeptics read these stories and say, how do I know that happened? How do you know it didn't happen? Yeah. If God's a miracle worker, shout yes. Yeah. Shout yes. Yeah. They were about to amputate your hands. Yes, Brother Allen, in uh, 1961, in February, on the 11th, my little girl, almost seven years old, caught on fire. And she was burning to death, and I tore her clothes off of her. I went into a state of shock, and they carried her to the hospital, in the Grady Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. And when my husband got there, the doctor told him that all the flesh is off of my hands, but my baby would die in 24 hours, and that they'd have to cut my hands off. And at that time... Me and my husband knew Brother Allen. We had met him in 57 in Akron, and we were preaching this gospel of deliverance. We knew God, and we said, God, well, give me my hands back. My husband took me 400 miles, took me in front of Brother Allen, and he prayed for me, and God gave me back my hands. And also, Brother Allen, I was tormented to death. I was under such a strain of torment. I, didn't, I couldn't live, but God, glory for heal me, and Brother Allen, Today, whenever I pray for the sick and the suffering, God delivers them because God promised me that. These are miracle hands. Shout amen, everybody. There's a great number of people here tonight, and it's testimony time on our telecast. And if you that have a real testimony of deliverance, healing, or a miracle, will line up on this side quickly, and while you're lining up to come and give God glory, here is Brother Joseph White. 
and the White Singers from Columbus, Ohio. This is Joseph, his brother Matthew, and their two sisters, Mary and Martha. And they're all Christians. If they weren't, they wouldn't sing on this telecast. They're all filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. And they are God's children. And uh, have you noticed that all of our services are integrated for all people, all churches, interracial? Let's give God a big hand clap for that. And this is Brother Joseph at the piano. some of these people testify quickly because I want every one of them that possibly can, can to testify before we leave your channel. This is brother and sister J.T. Jones, pastors from St. Louis, Missouri. This is little Carolyn. During the recent camp meeting in Miracle Valley, this little girl went on to be with the Lord. She died. Yes. You say, how come she's here? Because God is a prayer answering God. This girl was dead died during the camp meeting. But God raised her from the dead. He sure did. Now you can testify to that. Yes, sir. You know she was dead. I was right there when it happened. And God raised her. He did. Do you know anything about this, darling? Yes. yes. You know you were sick. Yes. And everything went black, but you came back. And what was the first thing she asked for when God brought her back? Uh, she wanted something to eat. She hadn't eaten anything for a week. She couldn't even drink water. I tried to keep her fever down with uh, baby aspirin, but it would just come right back up. She couldn't drink water, and I have to um, take care of her that way. And I'd have to give her um, um, alcohol baths to keep her fever down. But it, uh, the lowest her fever was in a week was 101. I didn't know it then. She had pneumonia. But this could go on for an hour. Yes. But she died. She sure God did. God raised her and answered her God prayer. God raised her and answered her and prayer. And you know this happened. Yes, sir. Now, these are pastors from St. Louis. And I'd rather have 20 good testimonies that last a moment than just one that lasts an hour. Here's a little lady that came into our service here a week ago, Saturday night, over here in the invalid section. And this little girl had... Uh, Zipislatus, she's 
uh, take Cedar. She got a blood clot. And a blood clot on the brain, laying over here on a stretcher. And what happened? Well, she's better. Did she get healed? Yeah, uh huh. This is Sana Ron Klein, 65, 15 Glen Ivy here in Uber Heights, Dayton. Uh -huh. God healed her last Saturday night. Last Saturday night, night uh-huh. And there's no sign that it's there now? No, she's not taking any medicine or anything. She was taking medicine three times a day. But, but she's healed now. Uh -huh. God bless you, good. This happened a week ago, last Saturday night. This next little lady was telling me about a marvelous thing that God did for her. She had a cyst on her ear as large as an egg. That was a 19 and 64 right here under this tent, the same fairground. This is Evelyn Browning, 58 16th Street in Newport, Kentucky. What happened? Well, 19 and 63, I first attended your service And here. you had a cyst on your ear? I did. How I, large was it? Well, then it wasn't as big as a pullet egg. But, but 1964, it began growing. And you came to my meeting? Absolutely. Did we pray? Absolutely. And what happened? It left instantly. It left instantly? And I didn't... Now that's enough. Talk You'll talk all night if I let you. Here's a grandmother that brought her child. This is Grace Jump. And she had cerebral palsy. She wore a brace for three years and a half. One eye was crossed. But in 1960, when our tent went up here for the first time, what happened? She was prayed for, and uh, she was healed. Healed instantly? Yes, You took was. the brace off? The next morning. The next morning. And she's been healed ever since? Been healed ever that since. That was in 1960? That's right. And this is 1967. Everybody give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? This is Anna Rosani from Arnold Avenue, Pres Prestonsburg, Kentucky. And in 1965, she was here under this tent. She had a drop kidney, high blood pressure. And what happened? And I was also was in and out of the hospital all the time. I mean, they one week I was in, I was out, I was back and forth. And they thought he was going to do surgery, patch my kidney back mm -hmm. up. But I came, to, I came to your, uh, you know, your meeting. To the tent here, yes. And we prayed. You prayed for me and God healed me. And you've been healed ever since? I've been healed since and have been in hospital since. Haven't and been in the hospital since. And this is seven years. <laughs> Isn't he wonderful? <laughs> yes, here comes Grandma. Bless your heart, honey. This is Bertha Vanden, 257 Crap from Cincinnati, your own city. Yeah. She had a tumor on each one of her limbs on the inside Dang that you. rubbed together when she walked. Oh. They were almost as large as a football, much larger than a grapefruit. Yeah. This was in 65. Yeah. What happened? It left. It left? Yes, it or they left? It's gone. They both are gone. And they rubbed together for years, and I wondered how it ever get rid of them. How many years you had? Oh, look like, I don't know, about 10 or 15, maybe, or something like that. Uh-huh. And, and, and they, they, they was that big? Yeah. And we prayed for you yeah. two years ago. Yes. Where'd they go to? Oh, glory. Oh. <laughs> Here's a sweet little girl been attending this entire meeting. Now, the reason I'm... Uh, doing most of the speaking for these people. I've had an interview with all of them. And they're not trained in public speaking. If I turn this microphone over to generally, most of them, they, they just talk an hour. And you wouldn't enjoy this. What's your name, honey? Something about Teresa Lamalal. Ah, that's quite a name. And you're the grandma. I'm the grandmother. And when was it she got healed? Oh, she got healed in your campaign in Louisville, Kentucky. She was two and a half years old. She and was she, two years and a half old. And she pulled her hair out and eat it. She had and a terrible hair. habit of pulling all her hair out and eating it. And we prayed, and what happened? She was healed, and I was healed of high blood pressure. Yeah, I see, I and know. you're both healed, so that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Isn't Jesus good? This is Emma Hogan, 916 York Street, here in your own city. 1961, our tent was up here. And what happened? I was taken with a bad heart condition. And I rushed to the hospital on uh, emergency. And um, I just got worse and worse and worse. And by, I was sent to the hospital on, at 10 o'clock. And by 5.30, I was helpless as a baby. I couldn't even raise my hand. And the nurse had to stand by the bed and feed me. 
And Mother Bossa came down to the hospital on a Friday at 2 o'clock, and she prayed to pray our face for me and put one of Brother Adam's blessed claws on me and gave me one of Brother Adam's books to read, God Will Hear You. And on Saturday morning, I got up and I went to walking, and I've been walking ever since, and I've been healed ever since. Hand me that chest, please, will you, please? Bring me that little chest over here, Don. Mother brought her this book, God Will Heal You. That was when she was on her critical list on Friday. This was Saturday. Laid one of these little prayer claws on her that we had prayed over and mailed. Amen. And what happened? And I was healed instantly. 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 And you're still healed. Still healed. There's one here for you if you'll write me. The Bible said God wrought special miracles for the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs. These are miniature handkerchiefs or aprons. We've mailed these out by the thousands. People mail them to us and we lay hands on them and pray over them and mail them back. And people are receiving miracles today as they did in the book of Acts when they placed them on their body. Shout yes. yes. If you write for this book, I'll be happy to mail it to you. Just ask for God will heal you. And our mailing address is the Allen Revival Telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona. Thank you, Don. And you're the little lady that's been blessed so much of the Lord. This is uh, Emma Hill, 70 East Utica, Buffalo, New York. She had a paralyzed right arm and hand from an electric shock. And we were having a broadcast in 1958. And you, you got healed how? Well, I was sitting there. I couldn't wash no clothes. I couldn't do anything with this hand. I couldn't even squeeze out of the washcloth. It was paralyzed because it was yeah, an because electric that shock. Yes, I pulled the light on that night. I came from church. And, and you it, got it, it shocked. Out, you just got shocked. And left it paralyzed and vein. helpless. Yes, bust the vein, twisted and it. And we were on vein. the radio, and she was uh, had faith to believe God, but God heal her when I pray on the radio. And you put that hand where? On the radio. And what happened? Well, immediately that vein got back in place. The, he, the wound was healed up, and I went downstairs and washed three lines of clothes. Hallelujah. And you got and healed. Hallelujah. She got healed listening to the broadcast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless this little lady. Yes, God bless her. This is Viola Payne from Olinda, Tennessee. She had a constant nosebleed for one year. And she mailed me an apron, something like this. And we laid hands on it and prayed over it during the winter camp meeting and mailed it right back to her. And when she got it, she says, when I put that on, God is going to heal me. God is going to heal me. So, in faith, she put it on just like people did in Bible days. And what happened? God healed me. He healed me instantly. And the nose split bleeding. Yes, it did. It Hadn't bled any more. No, no more. No You're more. still healed. Still healed. You believe it was that apron? The faith that I had in the apron. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Write me for one. People make them across the nation and mail them to us, and we pray over them. And if you'd like one of these special prayer clause, we'll be happy to mail you one. When you write me, tell me your sickness, disease, or infirmity, and let me know how we can help you. Now, everybody stand with me, and I'm going to pray for every one of our viewers. And if you believe God right there in your home, my God will heal you there. Just the same as he's healing people under the sin. Put your hand on my Bible. Just put your hand right up there on my Bible. Touch it. And I'm going to pray. And if you believe God, God's going to heal you right where you are. Now, Lord, you've declared the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And as I pray now, stretch forth your nails, God, hand. Heal the sick, the diseased, and the afflicted now for the glory of God. Say yes. If God sees you doing this telecast, write me a letter and let me know. We'd be happy to publish your story and your picture and your testimony in Miracle Magazine if you'll furnish us a photograph along with your testimony. Until next Sunday, over the same channel, if you're faithful with your mail, we'll see you again. Until then, God bless you. Good. 
you have a special need of prayer request, write Evangelist A.A. A. Allen a letter today. And remember, your generous letter will help make this program possible each week on this station. His mailing address is Evangelist A.A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona.